see we have read about grating now we will be studying about dispersive power of grating what is meant by dispersive power of grating when do you when you have heard for about dispersion for the first time have you heard of dispersion see we heard for dispersion for the first time in school when we read about dispersion produced by the prism see in case of prism suppose this is the prism when white light is falling on this prism the white light consists of several wavelengths you have wavelength between 0 to 4 micrometer to 0 0.7 micrometer so several you have several rays which are having different different wavelengths 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 this is glass and for the glass the refractive index varies as a plus beta by lambda square it means glass will present different refractive index for different different wavelengths glass is going to present different refractive index for different different wavelengths suppose this is normal and you have the suppose this is theta i theta i is going to be same for all the wavelengths so you have Snell's law that is 1 into theta i and suppose the glass is mu mu into sine theta r it means different different wavelength are having glass representing different for different wavelength glass presents different mu so theta r for different different wavelengths are going to be different it means the angle of refraction is going to be different for different different wavelengths and that leads to dispersion forming of different refracted ray for different wavelength leads to dispersion dispersion is taking place over here the different refracted rays are formed for different wavelength that's called dispersion and it comes out you have comes from form of several wavelengths which are divided into seven regions depending on the color sensation that it produces in your eye these wavelengths are categorized into several regions red region, violet region, vib gear, v i b g y o r, right? So they are they are not wavelength, they are wavelength regions. Seven so this this range is classified into seven wavelength region. And you find that different different rays are formed, different different rays having different wavelength are refracted at different different angle, leading to dispersion. Leading to dispersion. Dispersion is forming different refracted rays for different different wavelength is called dispersion so we say prism is dispersing the different wavelengths prism is leading to dispersion of the wavelength dispersion of different different rays white light is getting broken into several rays that's called dispersion same thing is being done by the grating also and grating also you have the fringes the position of the fringes depend on the the position of the fringes for different wavelength the fringes, the position of fringes are different. For different different wavelength, the position of the fringes are going to be different. Suppose you have two wavelengths having wavelength lambda and lambda plus t lambda. So if you have nth maxima formed at an angle of theta, then n nth maxima of lambda plus d lambda will be formed at an angle of d theta. See, say if this is theta n this is lambda then for lambda plus t lambda this angle will be theta n so nth order maxima of lambda you have e plus t sine theta if it is n lambda then e plus t which is theta n d theta n is n lambda plus d lambda so you are finding that for different wavelengths the position of the fringes are different position of the fringes are different if lambda for lambda nth order maxima lies at theta n then for lambda plus d lambda nth order maxima will lie at different angle right so we say the grating is dispersing the two wavelength, just forming different fringes at different angles.
that you form in the fringe area, not all the fringes, at different different angles. For lambda it is theta n, for lambda plus d lambda it is theta n plus d theta n, right? This will be d theta n. So dispersion is measured by this angle. The difference in the angle at which the fringe are formed, that's the dispersion. Dispersion is measured by this angle, d theta n. So can you tell me what is d theta n? You differentiate this one, you'll get e plus d cos theta n and d theta n is n d lambda. So d theta n, that is difference in the angle at which nth fringes are formed, d theta n is n e plus d cos theta n d lambda. So the amount of dispersion is depending on, for a given difference in wavelength, the amount of dispersion produced depends on this factor. The amount of dispersion produced depends on this factor. If this factor is high, the dispersion is more. We are finding one thing that dispersion is more in the higher order. Dispersion is zero for the central maxima. For central maxima, lambda and lambda plus d lambda are going to have the central maxima at the same point. First order maximum dispersion will be 1 by e plus d cos theta 1. For second maximum it will be 2 by e plus d cos theta. So as you go towards the higher order, the dispersion produced by the grating is increasing. Dispersion produced by the grating is increasing. This term in the bracket is called dispersive power. Dispersive power. We define here a term called dispersive power. It is the, the rate of change of angle of diffraction with the wavelength of light is called dispersive power. It is defined as d theta upon d lambda, which you get from here, n upon e plus t cos theta n. So the dispersion is difference in the angle of diffraction for difference in the wavelength with respect to difference in the wavelength. If the difference in wavelength is d lambda, then difference in the angle of diffraction is given by d theta n. So this is a factor which is determining how much dispersion will be produced. How much dispersion is produced depends on this factor. right? Now, we will go to the next topic that is resolving power. See, you have a lot of confusion between dispersive power and resolving power. I'll tell you what is resolving power. This is what I've discussed is our, our dispersive power. This is about dispersive power. Dispersive power is just forming different fringes for different wavelength. It's called dispersal. Forming a different fringes for different wavelength is called dispersal. Now, what is resolution? Can you tell you what is resolution? What do you mean by resolution? If suppose I have a point over here and I draw one more point over here. Suppose you go 10 meter where you are sitting right now, you just go 10 meter away from the screen, just go 10 meter away from your computer. These two are the points, right now you, you are seeing that they are, they are two different points. If you go 10 meters back, if you go 10 meters behind where you are sitting right now, wherever you are sitting right now, you just go 10 meters behind that position. Don't take your computer or laptop and see these two points. Will you be able to see these two points? You can do that. Are you able to see this as two different points? If you are seeing this point from a distance of 10 meters, for seeing these two points from a distance of 10 meter, I don't think you'll be able to see it as two points. What does it mean? See the two points are dispersed, but you are not able to resolve the two points from a distance of 10 meter. Means the two points are different. They are dispersed. They are one point, but at a distance of 10 meter, your eyes are not able to resolve it. So dispersion is there, but you are not able to resolve it. See, for resolving 
so you can't resolve a single point for resolving there should be two different point so dispersion is the necessary condition of resolution <coughs> so but dispersion does not only lead to resolution the points are dispersed but they are not you are not able to resolve it resolution is all about seeing the two point distinctly seeing the two point if you were to see the two point distinctly you say you are able to resolve it if you take a telescope be at a distance of 10 meter have a telescope with the help of that telescope you will be able to resolve it you will be able to see the two points different from one another in that case teles telescope helps you to resolve the two points right so that's resolution seeing the two things differently is called resolution i'll take the example of grating over here this is the fringe for lambda and for lambda plus d lambda you have the fringe over here <coughs> this is for lambda and this is for lambda plus d lambda so for lambda is a theta n and d so it forms the grating forms different fringes for different wavelengths that's called dispersion but will you be able to see the two fringes distinctly? Because what we see is not each fringe, but the resultant of the intensity. The resultant of the intensity will be looking like, the resultant will look like something like this. If I take the resultant of these two, the resultant will go like this. What you are seeing is not red one. What you see is resultant. What you see with your eye is the resultant of the intensity. And by seeing this, you can't differentiate that. You can't say that there are two wavelengths. When you see this fringe, you'll just say there is one wavelength. So in this case, the grating is resolving the two wavelength, but we are not able to resolve. The grating is dispersing the two wavelength, but dispersing is not so high that the fringes are resolved. We are seeing the fringes as one fringe. By seeing the fringes, I can't say there is two. There are two wavelengths. So I will say I am not able to resolve it. Getting it, dispersing it, but I am not able to resolve it. So here the dispersion is not leading to resolution. Dispersion is so small that it is not leading to resolution. A dispersion is not so high that it will lead to resolution. So dispersion is not leading to resolution over here. This person is not leading to resolution at this point. Getting a point? Here this person is not leading to resolution. This person is small. You may go to higher order because if you go to higher order, the dispersion increases and you may have the two fringes getting resolved. I will take one more example where I will show how this person leads to resolution. When does this person lead to resolution? See this case. here. The fringes of lambda, this is lambda plus t lambda, and lambda. Here the dispersion is so high, dispersion here is more. If you see the resultant intensity, if you add the intensities, the intensity will have a kink. When you add these two, when you add these two. You have a kink over here. And when you see this kink, when you add these two intensity, these two intensity will add up, form a kink over here. This is called kink. We are not supposed to see a kink when it is monochromatic. So kink here makes it very clear that there must be two wavelength. It can't be one wavelength. One wavelength never develops a kink. So kink shows that there are two wavelengths. And then we say this person is so enough that it leads to resolution. This person is high enough that it is leading to resolution. Right. So here this person is so high that it is leading to resolution. We are able to see the two wavelengths distinct. We are able to understand that the, the light consists of two wavelengths. Here light is consisting of two wavelengths.
right so dispersion is so high that it's leading to resolution we say like this now we must quantify what do we mean by when we say dispersion is so high what is quantification that's so high what should be the minimum dispersion which gritting must produce in order to resolve the two wavelength that's very important condition that's a very important question how much should be the dispersion produced by the grating so that it leads to resolution so we have a very important criterion called Rayleigh criterion it says I write it over here here I write it Rayleigh criterion of resolution it says two spectral lines of equal intensities are just resolved by an optical instrument when principal maximum of the diffraction pattern due to one falls on the first minimum diffraction pattern of the other this is very important when principal maximum of diffraction pattern of one falls on the first minimum diffraction pattern of the other i will show you by diagram see the principal maximum of this is basically you can see the principal maximum of lambda is falling at the minima of lambda plus t lambda this is the maximum of lambda it is forming formed at the minimum of lambda plus t lambda and maximum of lambda plus t lambda is formed at the minimum of lambda so your dispersion d theta should be such that maximum of one is formed at the minimum of other maximum of this get formed the minimum of lambda maximum of this is found in the minimum of lambda and maximum of lambda is found in the minimum of lambda plus d lambda so this should be the amount of dispersion this is the minimum dispersion where spectral lines the wavelengths are just resolved just resolved means the wavelength won't develop a kink exactly at this but it will start developing kink once the dispersion goes higher means it will be this only if the moment this person goes more than d theta will start saying developing a kink so the lines are not resolved lines are starting to get resolved lines are started getting resolved once you go beyond this t theta once you, your dispersion goes more than this value once your the two wavelengths are dispersed more than this the kink will start getting formed King will start getting formed. King is about to get formed at this condition. That's called Rayleigh criterion. That's called Rayleigh criterion that gives you what is should be the minimum dispersion which will lead to resolution. This is the minimum dispersion which you should have, and lines start getting resolved. Lines won't get resolved. Lines will start getting resolved. The moment you get slightly greater than this, the kink will start getting developed. So that's the Rayleigh criterion. That's the Rayleigh criterion. No, I will define resolution, resolving power of grating. I will de define what is resolution power and I will define it for grating also. Let's define what is resolution power. I read the definition. The resolution power of an optical instrument represents the ability to produce distinctly separate spectral lines having two or more close wavelength. See, resolving power required, you write it as it is measured by you know, power required. to resolve to two wavelength near lambda and separated by is given by lambda upon d lambda this can be proved also to prove is not necessary for you right i'll prove it at some point of time this is r is lambda upon d lambda right the resolving power required to resolve the two wavelength near lambda and separated by d lambda is given by lambda upon d lambda now let's calculate resolving power of the grating this is resolving power required this is resolving power required to resolve the two wavelength near lambda and separated by d lambda that's given by lambda upon d lambda now let's try to calculate the resolving power of the grating 
which has been defined by lambda upon d lambda. Just calculate resolving power power of plane transmission grating. Let me draw it. Do this. <coughs> you have this is the fringe for lambda. And this is for lambda plus d lambda. Right? This is the maximum of lambda. This is the maximum for lambda plus d lambda. Maximum of lambda plus d lambda is formed the minimum of lambda and vice versa. Maximum of lambda is formed the minimum of lambda plus d lambda. So you have e plus d sin theta n equals to n lambda and e plus d <coughs> sin theta plus d theta n equals to n lambda plus d lambda. So now at theta plus theta n plus d theta n that is this point you have the minimum of lambda you have the minimum of lambda and which order minimum if it is a nth maxima then the order of minima over here will be n n plus 1 see from central maxima to first order maxima you have n minus 1 minimums p is varying from 1 to n minus 1 between first and second p is varying from n plus 1 to 2 n minus 1 between nth to n plus 1 nth p will be varying from n n plus 1 to n plus 1 n minus 1 see p the minima the value of p is your it is varying from 1 to n minus 1 between central to first order maxima it is varying from n plus 1 to n to n minus 1 between first order maxima to second order maxima between second order max between second order maxima and third order maxima it is varying from 2n plus 1 to 3n minus 1 so after nth order maxima the value of p is going to be n n plus 1 so it means you can just put the condition of minima that is n n plus 1 into lambda now we can put this over here this will be n into I can write this as n into n lambda plus t lambda is n n plus 1 into lambda or I can write n n lambda and then d lambda is n n lambda plus lambda this will cancel out and we get lambda plus t lambda to the resolving power is equal to n n the resolving power is equal to n n n is the total number of slit and small n is the order total number of slit into order so you find that the resolving power is high in the higher order. Why? Because dispersion is more. Dispersion increases as you go towards higher order. So resolving power of the instrument is higher as you go towards higher order. Right? So this is the resolving power of the instrument, resolving power of the grating, plane transmission grating. Right? If you have any problem in understanding, you just put the question on the forum. Right? I must get your feedback. Now at last I'll discuss with you the angular half width angular half width of an nth order maxima suppose this is angular half width right here angular half width angular half width simply right Suppose this is nth order maxima for lambda. This is theta n and this is d theta n. So d theta n is going to the angular half width. This is full width. This is the half width. So the angle subtended by this half width at this point O is the angular half width. I am measuring the angle half width in terms of angle, angular half width, d theta n is the angular half width, this, this, this one, d theta n is the, here is the maxima, here is the minima, so full width is this, half width, this is half width, d theta, we want to find d theta n, 
at theta n you have the maximum e plus d sine theta n equals to n lambda and at theta n plus d theta n you have the minima and the order of that minima is n n plus 1 d theta n is n n plus 1 lambda I can write this as let me write it over here this can be written as n e plus d sin theta n cos d theta n cos theta n sin d theta n equals to n plus 1 lambda or I can write e plus t see d theta n is very small when it is very small this cos d theta n is 1 and sin d theta n is d theta n so this will be written as n into sin theta n n into e plus t cos theta n and this is d theta n and n lambda plus lambda or e plus d sin theta n is n lambda cos theta n so this will cancel out and your angular half width comes out to be lambda e plus t cos theta n so this is the angular half width alright now we also numerical on grating resolving bar and dispersive bar this